Okay, hello and welcome. In this particular video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of solving a competitive equilibrium, solving a monopoly um, outcome, uh, analyzing consumer producer surplus under those two market structures. So I'm going to do this with some numerical examples. And I'm going to switch over to my iPad where I'm going to be able to do this nicely. So that is going to be hopefully happening soon. All right, so here's the first example. So I am, uh, I've given us a demand curve where the demand relationship is given by price is equal to one minus Q. Supply curve is price is equal to, or price is equal to quantity. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've graphed this. So the horizontal axis is quantity. The vertical axis is price. Um, the intercepts of my demand curve are one and one. Demand curve's downward sloping. It obeys the law of demand. So its endpoints are one and one. My supply curve is upward sloping. P is equal to Q. You could think of this in terms of like the X, Y plane. This is like the equation Y is equal to X, right? Because P is in the vertical axis and quantity is in the horizontal. So this is the 45 degree line. Okay, so I've got this labeled. We've got our intersection. Now I wanna find the equilibrium price and quantity. To do that, well, in equilibrium, our quantity demanded is equal to our quantity supplied. Um, and I'm going to use this assumption. Actually, I shouldn't write this because what I'm going to do is let me just say demand is equal to supply. So I'm going to write down my demand curve and say 1 minus Q is equal to Q. And I'm going to solve. So 1 is equal to 2Q or 1 half is my quantity. So we'll go ahead and label. So we found a quantity of 1 half and our competitive equilibrium welcome. What about the price? Well, plug this back into one or the other equation. I'm just going to plug it into this one because it's super easy. The other one's actually not that bad bad actually so that's one half uh, for our price okay so that's my competitive equilibrium competitive outcome um, and we end up getting a, uh, a price of a half and a quantity of one half when the entire market is com is served by uh, competitive firms so we can talk about consumer surplus and producer surplus consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve and above the market price Producer surplus is the area under the market price and above the supply curve or the cost curve. Why? Well, remember consumer surplus is the difference between what consumers would maximally be willing to pay and how much they're actually asked to pay. And producer surplus is the difference between the market price and what, what are the costs to produce. So I'm gonna skip over because I've got this made already. So consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve and above the market, the actual price. Producer surplus area under the price and above, uh, and above and above the supply curve, the cost curve. Um, in order to find this, well, clearly consumer surplus and producer surplus on this graph are just areas of triangles. To find the area of a triangle, we need one half base times height. So I'll find consumer surplus is the area of a triangle, one half times base. Well, there's one minus one half. What's this doing? That's this right here. It's along the price axis. One, a price of one minus a price of one half is giving me my one minus one half. And then this is actually, I kind of erase this right here. I mean this to be one half. This actually isn't looking so good. That's not really good either. So, uh, so we have, I uh, might as well, since I'm erasing things, right? Might as well make it look as nice as possible. All right. So I have one, one half times one half times one half or one half to the third power. Um, however you want to do that, you're going to get one eighth. So one eighth is my consumer surplus. And what about producer surplus? Well, I mean, this is a symmetric. I mean, clearly, you kind of stare at this. It has to be a producer surplus. It has to be one eighth. Let's justify that. So producer surplus is the area of a triangle, one half times uh, uh, base times height. In this case, what I need is one half times one half minus zero. Where's this coming from? One half minus zero. That's this price of one half minus price of zero. And then times a quantity of one half. Sure enough, one eighth. Total surplus is the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus. So one eighth plus one eighth is two eighths. Two eighths is one fourth, right? So we've got that. Okay, very good. There's no inefficiency. There's no dead weight loss. Consumer, the competitive equilibrium is, is understood to maximize efficiency. And um, that, that's, we, that's evident because we have, uh, uh, we have all uh, mutually beneficial gains uh, to trade have been exhausted. Okay, so example two. Um, ultimately, I wanna be able to talk about 
monopoly case. And so I'm going to give us a simple version where um, the monopoly is going to face a constant average total cost, constant marginal cost um, for the solution. And then I'll go to a more advanced example. So in the first case, um, I'm giving us a new demand curve, price is equal to 10 minus Q, and new supply curve, price is equal to two. So horizontal line is my supply curve. And I'm gonna, you can think of this as our, our supply curve as being um, marginal cost is equal to average total cost is equal to, this looks like seven, I had erased. So this is like version two of this video because I kept getting, uh, I kept getting this, not wanting to connect the way I wanted it to. So anyway, so um, no one cares about that. So competitive outcome, uh, first I have to find the competitive quantity and competitive price. Well, you get the competitive price for free. Competitive market is gonna be price equal to marginal cost in equilibrium, and so uh, our competitive price is just two. What's gonna be the quantity, the market quantity, at the price of two? Well, it's eight, because we have our market demand curve minus the minus uh, a price of two. Well, if I you know, move this over, um, my quantity is gonna be eight. So my competitive quantity would be eight, and my uh, competitive price, of course, is two. Uh, so I realized I just kind of sort of a hand-waving example there. So I said, so how did, we, how did I find that? So I had a quantity of eight, so I have price is equal to 10 minus Q. I can rewrite this as Q is equal to 10 minus P. And then I have my, um, and then I have my uh, quantity is equal to 10 minus two or it's equal to eight. Anyway, so again, consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve above the market price. So consumer surplus is again a triangle. In this case, this is a triangle that has one side of 10 minus two or eight and the other side of eight, right? So my consumer surplus is gonna be uh, 32, one half times uh, 64. Well, suppose a monopoly were to operate in this market, what would be the outcome? So for the monopoly outcome, yeah, so yeah. So for the monopoly outcome, uh, we have of course the same demand and we have the same supply. We'll think of the supply curve as being the marginal cost curve. So this is gonna justify me saying that my monopoly is gonna face marginal cost of two, constant marginal cost. Um, from the supply curve, from the demand curve, we can actually immediately get our marginal revenue curve because our demand curve is linear. For a linear, mar for a linear demand curve, the marginal revenue curve is always gonna have the same intercept but twice the slope. Same intercept, but twice the slope. So my marginal revenue has to be 10 minus 2Q. We know our monopoly wants to produce uh, the, the output that's gonna set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So I set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and I solve for the quantity. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm not gonna remake the video. So anyway, um, <laughs> I, could, I could stop the recording, I could turn off my microphone, but I'm lazy. So anyway, um, all right. So 10 is equal, or 10 minus two Q is equal to two. Uh, so eight minus two Q and then four is equal to QM is my monopoly quantity, which I've labeled here. And now we can find my monopoly price. So the monopoly quantity is from where marginal revenue crosses marginal cost. That's right here. The price is not two. Market's not competitive. Price is monopolized, or market's monopolized. So where do we find the market price from? Well, we have to go up the demand curve, right? Prices come from demand curves. The demand curve is 10 minus Q, so 10 minus four gives us monopoly price is six. Okay, so we have our monopoly price of six, monopoly quantity of four. This compares the, to the competitive quantity of eight and a competitive price of two. Okay, so if the price and quantity are, are different, it stands to reason consumer surplus and producer surplus are gonna be different. So let's investigate that. So here's my monopoly outcome. Let's find, uh, well, so we already knew consumer surplus in the competitive case and, and um, our consumer surplus in the competitive case. Let me actually just finish this example. In the competitive case, we found the consumer surplus. Producer surplus is equal to zero. 
because producer surplus is the difference between the price, the actual market price and the cost. Well, the price is equal to cost, so there's no producer surplus. So our total surplus is just 32. Sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus is total surplus. Okay, in the monopoly case, however, though let's find consumer surplus, producer surplus, and then we'll actually have some deadweight loss. Consumer surplus is again the area of a triangle. It's the area under the demand curve and above the actual price. So one half times 10 minus six times four. So we have one half uh, times uh, 16 is eight. And then we have, uh, so the consumer surplus is eight. Producer surplus is the area of the square, right? So six minus four, or six minus two is four times this four. So it turns out it's a square. So producer surplus here is 16. And then we have deadweight loss. Deadweight loss is gonna be the inefficiency due to the monopoly. So that's the area of this triangle. So one half, six minus two, six minus two, times eight minus four. So deadweight loss is a triangle of area eight. Deadweight loss is corresponding to the, train, the, the gains from trade that are not occurring because of the monopoly, right? The competitive outcome was way down here. The monopoly raises its price and restricts its output, and the monopoly outcome is, is, is higher. Here's a monopoly. There's a monopoly equilibrium. Here's our competitive equilibrium. The monopoly restricts its output, raises its price, and that's where its profits come from, right? So here, producer surplus is 16. In the competitive case, producer surplus is zero. So that's great for the firm, right? What about total surplus? Well, here, total surplus is going to be 8 plus 16, consumer surplus and producer surplus, and that's going to give us 24. We have deadweight loss of 8, uh, and that's the inefficiency due to the monopoly. Why? Well, because these four units no longer are traded. The monopoly is not producing them, it's not selling them. So going from the competitive market to the monopoly reduces the gains from trade by 8, because those four units are not traded. So here's another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. This is example one again. So remember example one, we found when our supply curve was the 45 degree line, price is equal to quantity. When our demand curve was one minus Q, in the competitive case, the equilibrium was a price of one half, or quantity of one half, price of one half. Consumer surplus was one eighth, producer surplus was one eighth, and total surplus was one fourth. In the monopoly case, well, the monopoly wants to produce, the monopoly wants to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we have our marginal cost. That was just this. We have our marginal revenue because we have our demand curve. The marginal revenue has to have the same intercept, but twice the slope. So the monopoly wants to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, or one minus two Q is equal to Q, or one is equal to three Q, or at a quantity of one third. So that's where this came from. And then the associated price, well, prices come from demand curves. Price is equal to one minus one third, that's two thirds. So this is our monopoly case. And that's where this price of two thirds came from. You can calculate consumer surplus as the area of this triangle. I do this right here. One half, one minus two thirds times one third gives us consumer surplus of one eighteenth. Producer surplus, this is the whole point of me showing you this example. Producer surplus in this particular case is an odd shape, right? Producer surplus is defined as the difference between the actual market price and costs. Well, in this case, we don't have constant uh, we don't have a constant cost. We have a linear cost, upward sloping cost. So producer surplus in this particular example is going to be this odd shape. And I'm going to calculate this as the area of a square plus the area of a, of a triangle. Right? And this is bothering me. I don't know if this, there's at least somebody that this is bothering. So I'll fix that for all of us. <laughs> there we go. So I'm gonna calculate producer surplus one plus producer surplus two. That's this and this. Of course, it's one contiguous shape, but I, um, it's easier to calculate this way. So, all right, so producer surplus one is the area of a, of a 
of a, a rectangle, so it's going to be of a square. So two thirds minus one third times one third, or one ninth. But that's not all the profit. That's not all the producer surplus because we also have this lower triangle here. The area of that triangle is going to be well. We have to find this point right here. It turns out that that's going to be one third. So one half base times height is going to be one half times one third minus zero times one third, or one eighteenth. And if I sum these, I end up getting uh, I end up getting producer surplus of one sixth. Okay, so we get consumer surplus of one eighteenth, producer surplus of one sixth. How does that compare to our competitive case? Well, let me just skip back to example one, where we found consumer surplus was one eighth and producer surplus was one eighth. Okay, well, so we have a situation where the consumers are doing worse. It went from one eighth to one eighteenth. Um, and our producer surplus has risen uh, you know, to one, uh, one sixth. What about the inefficiency that might have entered, the deadweight loss? Well, deadweight loss is, the, is defined as the difference between total surplus in the competitive case and total surplus in the monopolized case. Total surplus in the competitive case was one eighth plus one eighth or one, one fourth. Um, total surplus in the Monopoly case is going to be the sum of one eighteenth and one sixteenth or one sixth, and if you subtract off one fourth minus our total surplus here, we get deadweight loss of one thirty sixth. So we find this to be one thirty sixth. Okay, suppose you don't want to do that. Suppose you want to solve for deadweight loss directly and just calculate the area of this triangle. Could you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So here I am calculating deadweight loss directly. It's going to be the area. I'm going to calculate this as two separate triangles. So I'm going to bisect this and I'm going to calculate this as the area between the triangle with one side, two thirds minus one half, because we know this is one half. And I know this is one half. And then uh, with height, one, one half minus one third. That's what I did. And then the lower triangle has this side between one half and one third, and then between one half and one third is its quantity side, and that's just uh, one half times uh, one sixth uh, uh, times uh, one uh, one sixth squared. So, uh, so let's see. 